Check it out. The Hockey Shop. Source for Sports Surrey, thehockeyshop.com. Whether you're in the Lower Mainland or online, it is the place to go for all goaltenders. Presented by The Hockey Shop, Source for Sports Surrey, thehockeyshop.com. We are in Goal Radio, the podcast. Aaron Millard with David Hutchison looking svelte. And Kevin Woodley, you will notice a little bit of a a different speech pattern today because he's missing a tooth. Uh, They are the co-founders and they're ready to rock and roll with a fantastic episode today. Hutch, this is your shining moment where you can make fun of Woody all day long because he's missing that front chiclet. That's not fair for you to tee it up like that for me because you saw me text both of you last night. I said I wouldn't pick on him today. And now and you're just now teeing you're gonna, it up, throwing me a softball, lobbing one in. Kevin looks fantastic. He's hiding his face behind the microphone. So what can I say? I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> he didn't take anything in the face. It's just one of those dental uh, issues that uh, that we d- tend to go through every now and then. So uh, that that's why. So there's no no harm was uh, done other than taking the tooth out. Right? Uh, you're you're doing well and. Uh, and we hope you for uh, a speedy recovery when you get your your fake tooth in there. Yeah, listen, like just had the tooth pulled. The tooth has been in there for forty some odd years. It took forty five minutes of pulling to get it out. It was it was not fun. So I'll be happy to have this behind me. Besides all the commentary about uh, the missing tooth, um, I can I could do without the uh, all the other side effects too. But I've got about six months to a year of dental work ahead of me to fix this problem. So this will be great. I'm really excited for it, guys. Can't you tell? Like the playoffs, I'm just excited. I tell all the goalie parents that they want their kids to be goalies because it's the safest place on the ice. And amongst other things, you're not going to lose a tooth. And yet somehow you found a way to anyway. Did you tell all those goalie parents? Because I'm blaming this one on my parents. Tell all those goalie parents not to get too carried away with the orthodontics on their kids when they're young. Because evidently this is one of the things if you're if you have your teeth manipulated too much when you're young by excessive orthodontics, it can lead to what we call a recessed root later in life. And that's what happened here. So there's your dental lessons for the day, folks. Can we move on to hockey? Can we talk about the hockey the in the shop? chair dental podcast can brought we? to you by? That's right. But let's move on to hockey. Let's go hockey shop. Let's talk about the hockey shop. New gear every day is arriving out there. It's like freaking Christmas. As much as nobody wants to see me smile, it puts a smile on my face every time I go there right now. We're going to talk about the Bauer Mock Sticks today. We've got the Mock Gear. The new CCM Access 2 is on the shelf. CCM Access 2 chest, chest Protector will be on the shelf next week. Um, all kinds of new stuff rolling in every week, every day at the Hockey Shop and thehockeyshop.com. Uh, and you know what that means, folks? It also means we're going to have sales on the old equipment. I see the Axis original gear is already on sale. So in addition to getting the new stuff, it's that time of year where you can get deals on the old stuff. Make sure you check it out, whether you're uh, a high-rising, fast-rising junior player, a uh, beer leaguer like us, or a young kid looking maybe the second price point. Some really exciting stuff in the second price points this year uh, for the younger up-and-comers and for some of the beer leaguers. Make sure you check them out at the Hockey Shop Source for Sports and thehockeyshop.com. Uh, awesome stuff. Uh, conserve your energy, buddy, because we're going to put you to work uh, in just a little bit uh, with the feature interview brought to you by Sense Arena. Marco Terenius is going to join us, and he is a, a goaltending coach of 25 years in and around Finland and the KHL and has firsthand knowledge from working with Igor Shesterkin, who has uh, really burst on to uh, the Stanley Cup playoff uh, scene this year, making it to the third round, and right now has the advantage over the uh, consensus best goaltender in the world in Andre Vasilevsky. So we'll get into that. Uh, You mentioned the Bauer uh, Mock Sticks. Uh, Excited to hear about uh, those uh, twigs in just a little bit, but also want to tell everybody uh, about uh, the big live interactive and informative live seminar coming up with Pete Fry. It's a, it's a mindset seminar. Hutch, uh, how's it? Has it launched yet? It's launched Pete Fry, the goalie mindset guy. If you're an in goal reader, you will have seen all kinds of articles from Pete where he shares his uh, mindset expertise. And of course, last week he was the feature guest on the podcast and he was also on one about a year ago. So 
in goal members have had a great opportunity to get to know Pete. Uh, Pete is an NHL drafted goaltender or was a long time ago and uh, dedicated his life to helping goaltenders become better between the ears because he doesn't think he was good enough when he was younger. And uh, the stuff he does is fantastic. And he puts on these live seminars um, around North America where you can come spend a day with him keeping active, learning how to use your mind. So he's going to talk for five to seven minutes on a topic, and then we're all going to get together and get a chance to try something, to work on our mental skills, and then we'll circle back and do a few more things. And he's going to have some of the clients that he's worked with who've played sort of junior, maybe even some pro guys there. And of course, we're going to be there as well. And if you are interested in joining us live in Vancouver on April the excuse me, June the 25th. You certainly can do that, but you can also join us online. The whole seminar will be broadcast live. We've invested in some good gear so that we can make that a really nice production for you. And uh, we just love to have everybody join us. The registration is available now uh, on the InGoal website. If you happen to be an InGoal member, you get a $25 discount. So we're basically giving you back half your membership fee. And if you wanted to become an InGoal member, maybe this is a really great opportunity. Either way, we'd love to have everybody out there join us. And it's really something that's applicable for goaltenders of all ages. Pete works, gosh, he worked with my son when he was probably eight or nine years old. And of course, he works with guys right up to pro. And beer leaguers join us. Young goalies, old goalies, would love to have everybody there. Vancouver, June 25th, in person or online. Pete Fry, the mindset guy. I wonder if you'll uh, deal at all with being prepared if you're a backup and you're called upon and you're thrust into the spotlight into a tense situation like Pavel Francouz is right now. And how about the story in the conference finals? Another example of needing two quality goaltenders if you're going to go far. Woody, you've been beating this drum for a while. Darcy Kemper's out and Pavel's gone in and he's perfect. Yeah, he was perfect in that shutout in the first game. I got to say, though, um, and like this is in no disrespect to his performance because, you know, it's especially the easy ones that can be backbreakers if you let them in. Not a single high danger chance for the Edmonton Oilers in that game. Only one mid danger chance, 19 low danger chances. So, um, yes, you need two goaltenders. To get through the playoffs this year, uh, that's been pretty evident. I think we're up over 30 goaltenders that have already made an appearance after a record-setting season of the number of goalies that that got into games in the NHL, 119. Um, but it helps. If you're going to be a team that needs to, it kind of helps when you also are a team that shuts things down defensively, and the Avs have been doing that to the Connor McDavid-led Edmonton Oilers. Like, unbelievable. In two games since, France, who's started three high danger chances in two games for a team that has dry sidle and McDavid. Like that's unbelievable. And that's, you know, that's a credit to the way the abs are defending and full value also to Pavel Francis for the job he's done since getting in there. This is a, an interesting one because goaltending is such a, an integral part. And I think at times uh, too much of a uh, influencer on the result. And, and that is a goaltender saying that. Uh, but the other part is people will automatically go, a uh, goalie doesn't matter uh, with the Colorado Avalanche Hutch. They'll, they'll say it, they, they, they win uh, whoever's in the net. Certainly tempting to say that, isn't it? We're yeah. probably all watching that thinking, put me in, put me in. I could do this. But can you really? I mean, the pressure of the Stanley Cup playoffs, knowing what's at stake, knowing you're the one who's come in there. Uh, talk about Pete Fry. I think this is a mindset opportunity and it takes somebody who's uh, very prepared and has the confidence of his teammates. I mean, if it's an unprepared goaltender, if it's the e-bug, well, I guess we've seen that the e-bug works and guys work their tail off for the e-bugs, uh, Carolina, haven't we? But, um, you know, if the, if the team doesn't have faith in Pavel, what's their response going to yeah. be when he comes out onto the ice? Um, so he's earned their respect, he's earned their trust, and then they're willing to do the work so that they can shut down uh, McDavid and Drysaddle. I don't think we can underestimate... Uh, what he's done. Yes, they've done an incredible job and he, they've probably made his job easy for him, but that doesn't mean it's an easy job, if that makes any sense. Uh, I hope that uh, that he's able to uh, continue this uh, because it's a marvelous story. One of the knocks on Pavel over the years has been uh, just uh, being able to stay in there uh, night after night. Uh, that was certainly the case with Antiranta. 
uh, and uh, it looked like he was good, but in the end, uh, he got banged up uh, and hurt uh, his MCL. So we're hoping for better things uh, out of Pavel Francis. Yeah, and hey, listen, like I wasn't meaning, I was not trying to diminish anything about what Pavel has done. I think there's a lot of uh, people that maybe don't know a lot about his game and they forget that the fact uh, just a couple of years ago, I mean, he was basically pushing Philip Grubauer for the number one job with the Colorado Avalanche. Um, it ended up needing hip surgery that offseason. I know the playoffs a couple of years ago when Grubauer got hurt didn't go well for Francouz, but I believe there was already an injury in place. Uh, had hip surgery shortly after the season. Um, and I think, you know, the question I think from the outside was, uh, did the moment get to him a couple of years ago or was it the injury? And the Avs would have pretty much emphatically answered without saying so that it was the injury because they've re-signed him, I think, a couple of times since. And I can tell you, I've talked to goalie coaches on other teams that were kind of hoping that Pavel Francouz would get to the free agent market the past couple of times when it's looked like free agency is approaching. And the Avs have done a really nice job, not just of extending him, um, but getting him on a relatively cheap deal, your perfect 1B situation uh, in Colorado. And he's kind of, he's paid them back for that now that he's healthy and playing it. Like, this is a guy who put up really good numbers when he has been healthy. And like I said, had the attention of other teams who would have taken a run at him had he ever hit the open market. He may not have come over. I think he was, what, 28 before before he came over from the KHL finally. Um, but he's made an impression on more than just the Avs since he's arrived here. So just because I, you know, I, I automatically went to how good the Avs were defensively because it was shocking to me how good they were in that first game, especially in game two in Colorado, like to not give up a single high danger chance to Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl on that Edmonton team is exceptional defending. But please don't confuse that for sort of diminishing Pavel Francouz when I say that, because I think he's actually been, I, as a matter of fact, like I do a an annual hit on Sirius XM um, sort of preseason every year and they make me pick my sleeper guy and it was tough this year and I didn't know if it was fair to call Pavel a sleeper but I thought if he was healthy he I picked him as my sleeper guy because I think he's a guy that's still capable of of playing frankly up to a 1A level like I think he has that in him when he's healthy so it shouldn't be a surprise that he's playing well in this role right now and I don't think you can fault a guy for the chances that are put in front of him I mean he's doing the job that's been given to him and you can't ask him to create better scoring chances for Edmonton, can you? He's doing the work. And how many times have we seen a goalie not be busy, not facing a lot of dangerous chances, and give up a squeaker or a soft one, and how that deflates a team who's playing so well defensively? So again, when you're not busy, that's a challenge in itself. And and he did the job. He got a shutout, right? Like I, There's nothing to critique here. Keep in mind, Darcy Kemper is an unrestricted free agent, so this is an opportunity for Pavel to show management and the coaching staff that uh, he can carry the load, and maybe uh, Pavel slides right into that a number one job with the Avalanche uh, if Darcy Kemper uh, has uh, the uh, the opportunity to be wooed away uh, by somebody with a big money deal. We'll keep uh, watching that. Uh, in the Eastern Conference, uh, Igor Shesterkin, on home ice has outdueled Andre Vasilevsky. And this is a great battle between the likely Vesna Trophy winner and the best goaltender in the world. One of the areas, let's start with uh, Vasilevsky first. Uh, uh, one of the areas that's getting a lot of attention is the number of goals that are going in uh, on the blocker side on Vasilevsky compared to the rest of it. Uh, is it coincidence or is I we find it weird to say this. Is there something there? Well, I, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. To say whether it was coincidence or not would mean you would have to chart every opportunity to shoot where the, where there's time and space to pick a spot rather than just get it away quick or where the obvious solution is, you know, obviously obviously on a quick one-timer, you're shooting to the open side of the net. You'd sort of need to chart all of those and see how many of them are directed at the blocker before you could say, hey, this is a pattern and teams are going after it. And frankly, I haven't done that. So until you see teams repeatedly targeting it, I don't think you can say it's something they're going after. But the numbers are pretty stark. Um, interestingly enough, before this narrative sort of started to build and before people started to show those numbers, I think uh, one of the broadcasts had them at like 17 
on the on the mid to high blocker side, which was like quadruple what he'd given up on the other side. Um, I noted when we talked about actually for an art- article about him that there is a little tendency on high blocker to as good as he is at sort of closing things down in front of him. There is a bit of a tendency to turn off and make those blocker saves sort of parallel to his body or even turn high blocker, almost try and catch up with them behind him rather than cut them off down in front of him. Um, what the Swedes or a lot of goalies now would call box control. Like he's kind of, he's kind of opening up and chasing it into the bigger box rather than the small one in front of him on the blocker side. And as Hutch has talked about many times before, sometimes that's just a function of, you know, one hand holds a glove, the other one hand hold, holds a glove and a stick. And that can complicate matters. Hutch, what, what's your take on this? I, I tend to fall into what you brought up, Darren, is there's, there's a randomness at play. Like, yeah. A university university student taking basic statistics will tell you if you look at enough areas, no matter what, one of them is going to look significantly worse than the others, purely based on randomness. But that just makes it less fun, doesn't it? I mean, it's fun to be able to analyze these things and look at the numbers and say that something might be a weakness. And it's also human nature that if people see that there might be a weakness, they're going to start going after it. So I think it's a, a fascinating thing to look at. But uh Deep down inside, I think it's probably a little bit more random than anything. If it was a true weakness, uh, shame on the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Florida Panthers. Uh, yes. But, but then but these 18 goals, like a lot of them do fall on the Toronto Maple Leafs more so than, than the Florida Panthers. But uh, I, think, I think it's because uh, it's cumulative, uh, the, the, the goals that uh, he's allowed and where, where he's allowed them. Uh, I, I think it's just total uh, coincidence, and it's one of those so ones where you just you, you you're looking for a storyline. Uh, Dar- Darren, Hutch? Darren, Darren, yeah, Darren, we got the Pete Fry thing coming up soon. Sorry, he, we have Pete Fry coming up soon. He didn't allow the goals, right? The saves he didn't come up with. Saves he didn't come up with. I, I got to get sure. that through to 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 my head. I I, <laughs> I I need Pete Fry more than anybody. Well, you're going to join us from PEI, <laughs> aren't you? <laughs> yes. Besides, guys, Vasilevsky's blocker is actually his glove side. Don't we remember? Right. He's supposed to be left-handed. He's supposed to be a full right. That should be his strong yeah. side. We might need to pull that clip again for everybody. For anybody who hasn't been listening since the first couple of uh, episodes of the Ingle Radio podcast. I just hope this series goes seven games because I watch those. The the edge control by Igor Shesterkin, uh by a, a, a millisecond, he changes. And I don't know how he gets his skate down to 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 manage to track that puck, but it's it's wild. I think people who are I think people who are goalie fans, I mean, have to be doing what we were doing as the average person watches him make a a low to high save and push off the post and probably thinks, yeah, that was a really good save that he just made there. And we're texting each other. Can you believe the depth he got going from RVH to the top of the crease on his knees, how fast he did it? Uh, We talk sometimes about certain guys being sort of a textbook for goaltending or the or the guide for goaltending. And is Igor Shesterkin not that guide for the way he's moving around the crease on his knees right now? Plug for Woody and plug for in goal. Woody's got an article up at in goal mag right now, all about Shesterkin's movement where he talks to uh, goalie coaches who worked with him and strongly encourage everybody to go give that a read. Well, of course that's what led to this feature interview this week. Marco Terenius is one of those goalie coaches that worked with him in uh, ska in the KHL. And so we talked to him about, you know, some of those movement patterns and Marcus works with a bunch of different guys uh, in Finland as well in the summers. And so he sent me some clips and like essentially a lot of the movements he's doing are nothing new. There are some that are quite unique. Uh, we talked about that earlier this season, that sort of forward C cut from his knees to get rotation, to get out and then get rotation into the next one. Um, but a lot of it's just stuff that we'll see like even like 12 and 13 year olds here doing their warm ups. They, like, they all sort of do the dynamic skating from their knees. The difference is Igor is able to connect it within games and connect those movements in real time in games at a level that, quite frankly, I don't think we've seen before. Vasilevsky is the best in the world because he's done it, things at this level for so long. But to me, a lot of what Andre does 
is I'm not sure you can teach it. Like Andre has an ability to generate power from extended, um, like the end range of extension. Like he can be fully spread in the butterfly and pick up a skate and get a full push without having to load it. Like his ability to generate power from extended um, positions is incredible. His explosiveness is incredible. His size, his ability to go laterally, be spread out with his legs, and yet have his torso almost completely upright and his hands active. These things are all incredible by Andre Vasilevsky. Some of them, though, are physical gifts that as much as he works on the physical side and stretches and trains and off ice like nobody else, some of them are somewhat innate. Like you're not, it's going to be harder to teach that. We used to call Carey Price the sort of human DVD for goaltending. I'm not so sure that that title doesn't now go to Igor Shesterkin because what he's doing is n- less so physical freak type gifts and just more so technical perfection. And so make sure you check out the article at ingolmag.com for some of the details on that. Uh, and make sure you listen to the feature interview with Marco Terranius, because I think the first 10 minutes we spent talking about his work with Igor Shesterkin back in the KHL. Kids, if you're not familiar, uh, Woody just mentioned DVD. That's digital mm-hmm. video disc. Back when Woody was younger, he used to go to a place called Blockbuster to rent his movies, and he would bring them home on a disc. Apparently, when he was younger, he used to rent movies about Carey Price and goaltending as well. Yeah, it's but, like live streaming, but you had something in your hand. Uh, okay. Yeah, exactly. Listen, I actually had VHS tapes. That's how old we are. We don't, you know, DVDs are relatively new. I guess I can't use that term. He is uh, <laughs> just watch Igor Shesterkin if you want to learn how to play goal. Uh, live streaming is uh, mock speed compared to the old DVD and being able to get a movie and instead of going to the store and doing all that kind of. Uh, running around and then putting it in. Uh, you just click up buttons and it's good to go. Uh, and today we have the Bauer Mock Stick in our gear segment brought to you by The Hockey Shop, source for sports Surrey, thehockeyshop.com. Woody, we're looking forward to hearing the latest uh, plug and promotion and uh, information about the Bauer Mock Stick. Welcome back to the Hockey Shop, source for sports. We're down here in Goalie Utopia, and we are going to stick with the Bauer mock line in today's review. That came at you in mock speed. Uh, this is this is so bad. So bad. But you know what's not so bad as Cam's crappy jokes and my lousy puns? The new Bauer Supreme mock sticks. Cam. What's changed? What's new? What's different? We can see before our eyes. You explain to me how it all works. What's improved? What's better? And what's this going to set me back? The new Ergo Spine slash Ergo Bridge. So they've redesigned that back portion of the paddle of the stick. That's something that was so new and crazy when we saw it in the 2S Pro Stick. Refined a little bit in the ultrasonic and even further refined now into the Mach 6. So that goes all the way down now into the blade in terms of the cutout portion uh, of the stick itself. So that ergo spine still exists. Um, now where it connects a little bit further into the heel, starting to cover one of their breakage points that they found was actually where um, the blade and the paddle of the stick met in terms of overall fit. Had that, just- that experience ourselves. That was, you Correct. know, a, a lot of times sticks break up in the shaft. This was one of the few ones that we had break down. In See, the when sticks break, and we do send them back to the companies, they do pay attention, they do evaluate, and this is one of those um, you know, scientific evaluations that we see that come out of this sort of thing. So we're continuing with that lightweight stick. Because of that cutout as well, uh, we shaved a couple grams off the overall weight. Uh, we can weigh it later. We can show you what the actual weight will be. When we move on to the front of the stick, we see that updated uh, overall design. Um, I like the graphic. I like what they've done in terms of the stock colorways that we see, you know, fresh off the wall. Obviously, as we t- mentioned before, these sticks are available to order custom at any time. So we can uh, obviously, you know, mess around with the colors and get you set up that way. Um, that black one is hot. Little, uh, I mean, not to interrupt you there, a little matte finish in the gray on the black. Like that's a, that's a hot stick. Kevin, big flat, or big fan of the blacked out stick for sure. So one of the other cool features that has come out this year, stock at a retail, 
We have an additional curve for Bauer at stock retail. Something was available at custom, but you couldn't buy necessarily off the wall. And that was the P34 curve. So went away a long time ago, finally has come back. So Bauer now has a wedge option. So this curve will line up with, you know, your price fans in terms of overall playability and puck feel, something that's a little bit straighter on the ice, something that we've seen a little bit of a trend of goalies looking for a little bit of a straighter curve that sits flat and flush. P31, still their stock curve and still available. No problems there. Great overall sticks. Mid flex. Looks like a mid flex kind of. It's not like a whippiest stick I've ever had, but it's got a little bend. It sort of seems to be sort of almost mid to high kick point. It's not. You can get some good torque behind that, which we will show when we shoot the stick here in just a second. Oh, Cam's gonna shoot for us. Yes. Excellent. Prepare to laugh. Let's go see some shots with Cam and the new Bauer Mock Supreme stick. All right, so Cam had his little fun shooting session. We mocked him a little bit for some of the muffins, but the reality <laughs> is mocked. Yeah, hey, eh? ah. spelt differently. <laughs> King of the puns, out of boy. Uh, so feedback on the shooting. So great pop off the stick. Um, excellent response. Uh, it's a very stiff stick, but if you can put a little bit of torque behind it, um, you can really get that puck to pop off and get a nice launch to it. Um, the thing that I did happen to miss, as you so woefully called out for me, um, expand cell in the blade of the stick. What's that mean? Why is this important? So again, we had brought up how Bauer had experienced some breakage issues and had redesigned, you know, the back um, portion of the stick a little bit to help uh, reinforce the paddle of the stick. So they've done that with the blade as well. We had that issue too with one of our test sticks in the last run in terms of breaking in the blade, which you don't see all that often. Yes. So once again, the company listened. You know, these warranties do something becomes of them. They don't just toss them away. So analyzed, they added their expand cell uh, foam, which now means increased durability inside the stick. How does that work? Why does that work? Again, it's it's filling up, you know, overall space inside the stick, helping to reduce that overall vibration that's being transferred into the composite that's causing it to crack and break, allegedly. I could see the wheels turning, like it got a little scientific on you, and like the hamsters were just going hard. Well, it's like when you get a cereal box and you read the outside of it, you're like, oh, that's really cool. I like my Grammios. So. The question will be... There's Grammios inside the stick. We'll see if it works. Give us a call here at 604-589-8299 or 1-800-567-7790 or check us out at thehockeyshop.com. A quick reminder, not because he's pissed me off just now, but one of the things about calling the hockey shop is sometimes we let Cam out of the basement. Personally, I wouldn't. I'd leave him down here like a dungeon chained to something, but they do let him out of here. Sometimes they let him actually talk to customers in person. So when you call, it won't always be Cam, but guess what? The hockey shop goal department is loaded with goalies, guys who played up to really high levels, guys who still play, basically fellow goalie geeks. So even if you can't get Cam on the phone, as much as I would like to tell you to always call and ask for him and annoy the crap <laughs> out of him, there's gonna be an expert that can solve your problems, give you the same educated answers, maybe even better than Cam does. So make sure you give them a call with any questions you have. And don't worry, if Cam can't talk to you, they've got a handful of experts that can. Um, frankly, his head's getting a little big anyways. All right, we're done with mock. Thanks, Kevin. I know that Woody loves the glove wall. Uh, I'm a big stick rack guy. I love flying around, uh, whipping around, I guess you could say. Uh, Hutch uh, with with the sticks and the Bowermock uh, twig. Yeah, I wish we need to run sort of the outtake segment of the videos and remind everybody the gear segment is over on YouTube. Uh, if you want to actually see Cam and Woody putting these things through their paces, maybe get some up close views. I know with respect to the Bowermock gear and the Axis Two gear, we've got some some video there that maybe you won't have seen anywhere else and get a better chance to look at at the gear. But if you had the outtakes and you could see the background, my son, Maddie, junior goaltender, is sitting in the corner, sort of shaking his head and waving at Cam as they're going through uh, the profile on the mock stick because I think Cam has said that it's a, a stiff stick. Maddie's experience when he was working with it was that it's actually whippier than the hyperlights that he normally uses. Checked it with the Bauer rep when he was in town and, and Bauer agreed with Maddie that it's the whippier of their two sticks. 
I guess it's a perspective of what is whippy and uh, and where that fits in the right. lineup to cam you know they're both kind of stiff cam's pipes are not big like woody's they're just sort of skinny little arms that aren't very strong but yeah if, if you're looking at the profiles of the two sticks if you want a stiffer stick from bauer the hyperlight's the way to go and if you want a whippier stick then then the new mock is but both fantastic sticks which is interesting because it's actually the opposite of the lines themselves right when it comes to the lines mock is the stiff pad and supreme is the more flexible um softer pad so a little bit of an opposite direction with the sticks just think of it as reversed if you disagree with all of this and you've tried both sticks then feel free to let us know yeah podcast at ingoldmag.com or how about hopping on that youtube video and leave your comments because i know experiences can differ for different people maybe the way you shoot maybe the way you use the stick you can have a different experience let us know Hey, Woody, mm. I have a question for you. Yes. If you have the option uh, and you want to go fast, do you, do you, and you've got two choices, hyper light, and because you're light and you're, you're hyper, you're going fast, or mock, which one do you choose? Because I think it's two great, great name lines. Well, so see, that's a good question. I think that right now I would choose mock. And it has nothing mm-hmm. to do with the profile of the stick or anything like that or the gear. I think that just after seeing, and this is going to make us all the old men on this podcast, which I guess we are, but after seeing Top Gun Maverick, anything to, that sounds fast, like mock, like I want to go mock 10, yes. then I'm in. Yeah. Cause like I'm ready to, like after watching that movie, I was ready to become a pilot. Like let's go sign me up. I, I think, I think I read somewhere that. Uh, registration or enroll enlistment in the Navy is up 500% since that movie came out. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm all over the mock right now. Perfectly timed release of this uh, line by Bauer to go with uh, uh, the, the new movie, the Maverick movie. It's Uncle Sam's greatest recruiting tool. Let's just call it that. Uh, no doubt. Top Gun and then uh, now Top Gun Maverick. Uh, let's slide over. And conversation uh, continues uh, with Marco Terenius, a uh, longtime goalie coach uh, in the KHL and uh, in Finland. And uh, the stories that you guys uh, plan to get into here are, uh, I've lot, saw the list of, uh, of your, your uh, outline of where you want to go. Uh, this, this is a guy that, uh, that can handle a lot of different things, Woody. Yeah, no, and there's some great stories from goalies he's worked with when he was younger in Finland. Um, how about Tuka Rask doing Taekwondo as an off season thing? Um, there's a whole bunch of different things. Colorado Avalanche and goaltending, UC Parkilla, the first sort of, uh, European goaltending coach in, in, to get a, you know, a regular job in the NHL. And he's in the conference final. That's somebody that Marco Terenius has worked with during his time in Finland. We hear a lot about the programs. Uh, the national level programs that each country runs. We've heard a lot about Finland. We've heard a lot about Sweden. We hear a lot about Russia. Well, Marco spent during the pandemic when things were shut down, he spent a year helping redo and reorganize and put online the Finnish version of their goaltending curriculum and certification project. So he's got firsthand knowledge of that. But he's also spent five years in the KHL in Russia, or I guess a little more than that. It's almost up to eight now. So he knows, you know, why are we seeing all these Russian goaltenders? He's got some great thoughts on that. So um, just a guy that uh, we had the opportunity to talk to for the Shesterkin piece. I've talked to a couple times during the season as Igor's taken off. And I felt like it was time to get him on the podcast. And a guy that, you know, uh, I think we could see in North America at some point here. Uh, you'll hear him towards the tail end of this interview say that, you know, he's out of work right now. Not going back to the KHL last next season. Obviously, there's a there's other issues going on in Russia now and, and different yeah. pressure points. So he won't be back next year. And uh, a guy that you look at the success that uh, Parkill is having uh, with Colorado. And I've said for, you know, we talked about, you know, saying for years that you need two goaltenders to get through the playoffs. It's coming. Why we don't see more European goaltender coaches get a chance in the NHL has been something I bang, I draw my bang for a long time. We finally have one. Uh, could Marco be number two? Uh, we'll wait and see, but certainly a guy who has uh, the gravita and the qualifications to fill one of those roles. And these conversations uh, made possible because of Sensorina and our relationship uh, with the Sensorina VR. Hutch. Absolutely. Uh, Sensorina has been fantastic to us, and they're fantastic to goaltenders everywhere because they have a new app. And if you go download that app now, 
Whether you use Sense Arena or not, you will have daily access to new information to help you become a better goaltender. So strongly suggest everybody goes and downloads the Sense Arena app and give it a try. If you are a Sense Arena user, it's a way to level up your use of Sense Arena because training programs are on there, access to your stats in your back pocket through your phone, all sorts of great things on this. And you will see, I'm making a public promise now, the latest uh, video from InGoal using the Sense Arena VR system will be available by the end of this week coming up. So check out the new app. Hopefully you'll see a little bit of InGoal content there coming soon. Thank you, Sense Arena, for sponsoring all our feature interviews. It's also great uh, if you miss a week, they'll send you say it won't it won't criticize you, it won't uh, it won't uh, bash you, but it says, "Hey, I saw you were busy last week," and, and gives you like, "Oh yeah, I got to get back on that. I, I got to get going." Uh, a little bit uh, motivation, and we got to get on to our Sense Arena Sense Arena VR feature interview uh, with Marco Terenius, and this is fabulous. Uh, if you don't know him, uh, this will be wildly informative, and if you do know Marco. Uh, you know uh, his uh, past and what he's worked through, and the stories here will be uh, incredibly uh, fascinating for you. Uh, Marco Trenius on In Goal Radio, the podcast, the feature interview presented by Sensorina VR. Really excited to welcome to the In Goal Radio podcast for the first time. Live from Finland, where it's very early in the morning, a little later here over on the west coast of Canada, Marco Terenius. I was going to say, I, I stumbled there. I didn't know how to introduce you because when I looked up the goaltending coach history, it is a long one. He's been coaching goaltenders for over 25 years, starting in his native Finland, moving over to Russia in the KHL. One of his pupils, while well, he was with the SKA St. Petersburg, was some guy, you might have heard of him, Igor Shesterkin. He's worked with guys like Vili Huso, Mikko Koskinen, Kevin Lankinen, uh, the who's who of Finnish goaltending. Uh, Marco, thanks so much for joining us on the In Goal Radio podcast. Uh, did I get the introduction right? I didn't know which hat to... You wear so many hats, I didn't know which one to promote. <laughs> that, that, thank you for having me. It's a, it's a privilege to do be here in this in this show. Uh, I don't know whether to start or how to introduce myself. Also, like, yeah, well, yeah, let's, it's, a let, let, it's, 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 it's a lot of a lot of history. <laughs> twenty, yeah, uh, over twenty five years in it. Uh, over twenty as a professional. Let's let's start with the guy who's in the spotlight right now because he's a guy I've talked to you a few times about over text messages or message apps. Um, just to try and pick your brain on what makes him so incredible. You spent five years with him uh, in the KHL. Uh, he's turning heads over here, has for a couple of years. Um, and I know it wasn't just you. You had, you had another goalie coach there um, at St. Petersburg, uh, Rashi David, Davidoff. Hopefully I, didn't, I said that right. You guys worked with Igor yeah, Shesterkin yeah. for five years. Yeah, Tell me what makes him so special. Yeah, Rashi David, I uh, he was he was with me actually. Like uh, I had chance to work with uh, different goalie coaches and different coaches in 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 SCA. and uh, I I had also like I, I was pretty lucky to stay like pretty many many years on that organization. But uh, about the Igor, he is he is rocking right now. <laughs> like he he looks awesome. He, he looks awesome and. Uh, I, I have seen that guy since he was like uh, 17, 18, so, something like that. And he, he had a like raw talent and he has come a long way to where he's right now. He has done a lot, a lot of work. And uh, yeah, I, just I was, should I, be. <laughs> I, was, I was just going to say, like, we see him now. And again, we've talked about the movements and some of the, the way he skates and the way he holds edges and the way he moves on his knees. It's so powerful, yet so smooth and efficient. And it looks so polished, Marco. But it sounds like he arrived, like you said, there was a lot of work that went into that. When you first saw him to where he is now, like how much of that is just natural talent and how much of that is work ethic and trying to perfect his craft how have you watched him mature you know uh, i think there is there is all, always 
part of if you look those guys who are really at the top it's like natural talent and uh, there is guys who really change your your like uh, standards how how the things are and uh, Igor is one of those guys that it, it changes your standards and uh, as as a coach it uh, it gives you new kind of like perspective and new kind of like uh, think to your eye how to look things and uh, I have had I have been like lucky to have like some guys like Tukras uh, when when I started my coaching career he changes a little bit my standards because I saw how well he is doing things compared to the other guys and like if you look Igor Shashirkin he is also like uh, changing the standards like how to move, how to be effective, how smooth it is. Like uh, there is no extra movements. He's he's like so correct on a lot of things. What he he is doing, like uh, and uh, there is part of natural talent, but there is a lot of work behind it. And uh, did I answer your question? <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. Well, and so my my next question would be. What kind of work? Like, is it like we see him move so efficiently, so powerfully, but so controlled? Like, were you guys working on crease movement patterns? Like, how do you get that good? Like you said, there's a lot of natural talent there, but a lot of work that went in it. What What was the focus point? Like, were you guys doing skating all the time? How to How to get to that level? Yeah, we we had a concept that the, there was a lot of uh, skating and mo- movement trails. And uh, we had the concept that uh, we build it, build it those movement trails to like game like form and uh, just to, like repetitions day after day. And it, it gives you like, like, and he has like versatile tools. Like he, ha- he has more tools than most of those like. Uh, even NHL guys who has long career. And uh, I, I think his, his footwork is so versatile. Like uh, there is tools that older guys have not learned to use. And uh, he has learned, learned those things at the, at the young age. And now he's one of the guy who, who shows up the new standards of, of the moment. He's, yeah, he's kind of raised the bar a little bit in terms of how yeah. he moves. Can you give me an example when you say tools, what kind of things you might mean? Like, I think, like, is that like the way he holds his edges, he shuffles? Like, what types of tools does he have that allows him to move like that? Yeah, there's, there is those, like, uh, of course, on, on his skates movements, like shuffles, he pushes those, uh, uh, Clyde's every, everything uh, and we come also like uh, his stance how how he holds his like upright stance really long so he gets like uh, easy going shuffles on, on, on there and uh, he he gets his narrow stance there and it's it's working like those modern guys in NHL if you look like Demko and and like these guys, and he has those same same tools with uh, with his uh, stance as, and and game uh, on on the ice. There is um, really good turns. Those like pivots everything, and no, uh, every extra movement is cut it out. Like he don't get like extra get ups or or with the moving on a wrong leg or something he he gets good turns and gets like easily under the box he's really mobile on on a reverse he gets like good ins and exits from from the post and to the posts like uh, there's there's so many things <laughs> it's just and all, every aspect of movement he's just got it dialed in yeah yeah and uh, like uh, we we got a pretty like versatile package how how to be how how we were running things in in the ska and uh basically we we got same things all the goalies but like igor was the 
smoothest guy. <laughs> he was, and he's really explosive on 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 his feet, and uh, he he has great work ethic, and he he also wanna be the the leading guy. He wanna be like the best in the world. So we we filmed like a lot of those like almost every ice sessions and uh, like cut it out like the extra moment moment and everything from him that uh, that it, it, it's gonna be like sound sound package <laughs> so when you when you when you were filming those drills are you did you do a lot of video work with them where you're reviewing what we would think of sometimes i think movement gets overlooked um, in the review, like the simplification and the sort of yeah. efficiency of movement. I, sometimes we just, we move and we move really fast, but we don't really break down the mechanics to the degree it sounds like you guys have to eliminate those extra pieces of movement. Yeah, it's a, it, it was more about if you break down on the practices or those movements, it's more about to get those basic habits going, that your head comes first and you get good pushes, good stops, there is nothing extra on there. Uh, if you have to drop down on a rebound, you get good turns. Uh, there is not nothing extra on 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 there. Like uh, we we just try to build those like uh, really good habits on on the guys, and uh, okay. those ha- those habits will will get you like uh, that that extra. And it's it's also like if you built the game in in a game those habits uh, many times I, I, I would say that uh, it, that habit beats a uh, game reading even like you you make sometimes game reading mistakes but those ha- habits can save you. I was going to ask too. Um, he seems to read the game exceptionally well. Uh, he looks off the puck in really. Like he picks the right spots. He's always got his eyes on other locations whenever he has a chance. Like he really seems to know where the other threats are. How much of that ties into the skating? Like because he's always, it seems, ahead of the play with his movements, he's able to get there and assess almost before rather than getting there and then figuring out what's going on. He's ahead of things, so he's always able to look ahead and that tall stance, his ability to sort of stay narrow and tall, it seems like from the outside watching it, that that probably fuels a lot of those reads and that ability to beat plays without having to even feel like he's working too hard because he's not extended and opening and closing. Everything is so compact in the movement. Yeah, yeah. There, there is a compactness for sure and uh, that comes also from the movement skills and everything that he doesn't need to be stretched out of, or like uh, he's on time he, he gets like uh, so quick lateral movements that he gets under and beat those passes but uh, like those head scans I think he has even improved in, in NHL those things and uh, it's 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 been even more and more active and uh, some nights what I've seen like uh, he if he's not on the top of his game he's a little bit like too much puck focused but uh, now it looks like uh, so so good and relaxed he he's scanning on the ice well he's uh, he's there he knows where the puck goes next it's 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 like it's, it's almost like unreal. Like he's on the floor right now. <laughs> what um, I wouldn't ask you about the tall stance too, because is that something you teach? Whether it's as an organization in SCA or as a personal goalie coach when you're working with guys in the summer or your work within the Finnish Federation, you know, helping rewrite the curriculum. Something I wanted to talk to you a little bit. Part of that last year during COVID is that tall stance sort of a cornerstone of the goaltenders you work with that that tall narrow stance and and how it can fuel other parts of your game is that something you like to encourage and teach in everybody for sure it is like uh, I, yeah i would like to teach that for everybody but like uh, let's say that uh, when when i work on the summer times those guys come from uh, different clubs and uh, they have different backgrounds on a 
different places they ask for different things and I have to respect a little bit like uh, also those those things I, I cannot uh, like uh, coach against like their culture where they make their profession so like it's it's a little bit like complex I I might not be able to do whatever I want but I got to respect like but uh, I try to still run like good sessions for the guys and we have like great talks for the goaltending and and uh, for for hockey and life. <laughs> what let me ask you it this way then even if it's maybe not a stable for everyone like you said because not everyone comes looking for that but what why do you think it's important? Because we're seeing increasingly you mentioned Demko as a guy who's got that tall narrow stance when the plays on the outside. Um, why is that something that can be really good for goaltenders in your opinion? Um, I, I think it, it gives you more like mobility. You are more, more mobile. You have better box control on your hands when the puck is so far. And uh, you, it, you get like uh, better, better reads when you are up there. Uh, your body is more not like in a natural. It, it gives you like a little bit more relaxed body. It doesn't need so much energy. Uh, then like um, it gives for me like a little bit better patience on, the, on those situations. And when you talk to those pro guys who started to change their stance, um, not more nar- narrow, more up, and not all the time. But I, I think the stance has to be like living. It, when the box en- enters to the slot, you gotta be a little bit more like a hard stance re- readiness. But I, I think it has become like modern standard of that uh, that thing. Okay, well, hey, enough, enough about Igor. As much as he's, like you said, he is, he is rolling right now, and he is fun to watch, and I appreciate your insights into his game, but I want to talk about you and how you got into goalie coaching. Like I said, you've been doing this for over 25 years now in Finland. Um, uh, your roots in it. What I know you played goal. You played uh, at Tepera, um, and that's where you started coaching around 97 when your, your junior career sort of ended. So walk me through. Let, let's go right back to the beginning. How did you? Uh, how did Marco Terranius become a goaltender? Uh, this is like uh, almost like every kid's story. Your father gets to the hockey game, and uh, you cannot uh, stop watching the goalie. <laughs> so you tell your dad that hey, I want to be a goalie and I want to play hockey, and that that's how it started basically. And I I went to the small club when I was. Uh, like nine years old, so started pretty late. And uh, then a little bit later, I was 14, something like that. I went to Helsinki Jokerit, which which was a like, bigger club in Finland. And uh, our family moved to Tampere. Uh, I joined to Tampere, got a little bit uh, success on a junior level, played a couple... Uh, national teams in a junior juniors and uh, I, I had guys actually on the same team like Jussi Markkanen who went to Edmonton Oilers and uh, yeah. Mika, no- Mika Noronen who, who was uh, w- went on a Buffalo and yep. like they, they were the more talented than, than, than me and uh, then I I was actually like starting to think coaching pretty early and uh, just uh, it was easy decision for me when, when I didn't feel that I'm not become like real pro guy. Like I might run out of talent or something like, uh, and, but I was really interested about the coaching and I stopped playing when I, I was uh, 20. And my old coach, we won some championships together. He asked me to be part of this uh, coaching staff. And I started to study coaching. And it, at the beginning, I was like, uh, 
I was like maniac. I, I was ordering all the DVDs, books, like everything <laughs> on a goaltending and reading everything. And, and uh, that, that's actually like my first uh, for Ian Clark. First touch, like I get his like those uh, FTC, those uh, from the crease, uh, those books and and everything, like and uh, try to find. Now it's so easy nowadays, but back in then you had to spend so so many hours to find some something. And uh, I I bought everything on the market on on my last money. <laughs> it, it it was it was kind of fun. You had that energy and tried to do things. Uh, I went all the goalie coach courses in Finland. Uh, tried to get on those symposiums and and everywhere. Tried to contact on the on the guys. Then uh, at at the beginning, it, it was clumsy, like. <laughs> It, it was really, really clumsy, and I tried like everything. I was reading books, tried different things, and uh, then you you start to get like contrast on your eye a little bit later when you start to get like better guys who you work with. You start with the juniors, and uh, I was running in Tampere first tapara. Like the whole junior organization, like those uh, goalie ice things, and uh, then later I I did the same in Ilves, and uh, we we had chance to get Tukaras from from minor club to Ilves, and he he was actually the guy who who like was teaching you when you were watching him, like he was so talented guy. And uh, it gave gave your eye like the contrast that oh man this guy is so much better than the other guys on the ice even the like older guys that he's doing everything so so much better like the quality how he is doing things is so much better and uh, I think the contrast is really important for the coaches and. Uh, I started to understand like uh, more, more and more about the quality. And uh, then I had, uh, I, I'm a little bit lucky that I had a guy, Arto Koivisto, who, who was working in a Finnish national team at that time. And they were actually, I think they were silver, silver or second in a World Cup 2004. And uh, he, he was like started to mentoring me, and he he was a long time goalie coach in Finland, and he he started to give me feedback and ideas, and he took me on the ice on his sessions and and everything, and he, then uh, we connected to, with Jussi Parkila, who works in Colorado in Ilves, yeah. and we started to we are same age guys. And we started to try different things just together, like how to run those those junior things, things. And uh, yeah, I think it helped us both that get get the guy same age and changing ideas. That's how it's kind of started. <laughs> did I? Well, did I, I love. <laughs> it sounds like like I love it. We we tend to think from the outside. We think of Finland as having a very structured you know, like a lot of coaching uh, structure for the goalie coaches and programs and things like that. But it sounds like a part of your path, even though you took some of the courses, was just to try and learn from everywhere and sort of find your own voice and style and strengths working with other guys like UC Parkela and, and figure it out as you go. Does that sound fair? Yeah, yeah, I think uh, it's always like that. You learn from everywhere and uh, you you want to, all the time you want to learn. And if somebody has like more experience on something and if he has like thing that he's re- really good at, 
you want to listen to it and you want to get that information in. Uh, even nowadays, I, I try to keep uh, around me like uh, good hockey people and you can talk about with, with them and uh, get like different kind of like uh, perspectives and uh, ideas for, from them. Who are some of the people that you reach out to? Who are the, some of the people you've made relationships that you still keep up that like, do you just have goalie talking sessions, like just goalie coaching sessions? You just sit around and talk about goaltending and try and figure out what's next. Are there, are there peers you lean on for that? Uh, yeah, I, I have a small group around me. There is uh, mostly Finnish, Finnish guys. Uh, some of the, some of them are like, uh, Stefan Persson, Sweden. Yeah. Then you see, uh, Jakob Valkama. He, he was in Kazan coaching in KHL. And now we had a own company with him. <laughs> uh, Janne Pekkarinen, who worked in uh, Biarmäki International Ice Hockey, like Center of Excellence or something like that. Uh, I and Clark been uh, like uh, been sparring something with him. Parkila, of course. Uh, there is some some of those <laughs> those guys and uh, the goalies, of course. Like they are great. They 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 teach you also that you you see things in a different eyes and uh, they give you that. Uh, really like perspective on many many things and uh, if you meet those best best guys they they raise the bar <laughs> and you you are lucky to just to be a part of it you you work you work with in the summer as we mentioned some of the names you've worked with in the past some of the guys you work with in the summer like Miko Koskinen um Vili Huso Kevin Lankinen I'm probably missing one or two like those are those are really unique guys, like style wise, attributes physically. Miko's obviously so big, like different strengths, different styles. Can you give me an example when you talk about your learning from them, all these different things? Give me an example of one thing that you've learned from one guy that like made you, you know, you talked about Tuka too, like just made you think about things a little differently or changed your approach a little bit from learning from a goalie. Uh, I, 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 it's really hard to say just one thing. But yeah, it's a hard I question. Think, I'm sorry. Yeah, it, it's it's really hard question. But I think from anyone you can learn, like of those guys, and uh, they have different strengths, and we are like still running same kind of concepts with with them. But like I, like I said, that I have to respect a little bit. Like uh, on a summertime, their like clubs perspective and 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 those like guys on perspective, they try different things. They try also those things what uh, I would like. But uh, it's more like their option. They choose to be there, and they they want to be there. So. Yeah, it's kind of kind of hard question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it, it was it was I put you on the spot with that one. You you went to uh, Asper, uh, sorry after um, As, after Ilvis, you went to Espoo for a while before heading to to the KHL. How has your teaching evolved? We talked about all the different you know sources of information, different goalies you work with. Like if I were to ask you to describe your style of teaching or coach, like could could you identify that? Well, how would you best describe it? How has it evolved over the year? I believe strong in uh, hard work. I believe in uh, repetitions. Uh, I believe on those things that you have to build like uh, strong habits. And uh, for personal, my coaching style, I like to be like. Uh, pretty close to the goalies kind of like i i want to help them either it's like mentally or or like uh, outside at the rink or whatever it is, it is like i 
I want to treat them well. Uh, I want to keep the atmosphere loose, no matter if there's pressure around. Like uh, I can take that pressure to myself, but uh, I, I want to help those guys to perform under pressure. Of course, there is uh, moments that uh, you have to push guys also, but uh, I, I like to keep like things pretty pretty loose and that I think that comes from coaches like own personality those things that I I cannot be somebody else and I I cannot run like somebody else on on things I just have to be myself and try to do that kind of way my coaching thing what how have you seen like like how where, how would you describe goaltending coaching in Finland right now? You know we 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 used to hear about you know the each region sort of had there were slight different differences from region to region in terms of you know skills that were emphasized. I remember covering the NHL in the mid two thousands and people saying oh you could recognize a Finnish goalie from one region compared to another because there were certain traits but then also a national program and everyone would get together once a year and then take different ideas back out to their individual regions. Does that still happen? Is that still part of the yeah. model for Finnish goalie coaching? Yeah. Yeah, it, it is. And uh, it's our, our like uh, strength in Finland that it's a small country and everybody knows almost like is others. And, uh, there is meetings and there is those ed- educational like uh, symposiums and those those things and uh, it's small country. It's easy to also like update things. It's easy to change direction if you, if you need to. You can do it fast. We we get the message through fast in in Finland and uh, there is of course like everywhere. There, there is like different views, but uh, th- in Finland, they have learned that uh, to follow kind of like the big guidelines. And uh, there is not so many different kind of like styles or, or things. So you get the message through a lot faster if you want to change like uh, or update the systems. So it's it's kind of evolved, maybe a little less regional individuality without removing it completely, but it it's not as yeah. stark a contrast from one place to the other. No, no, but of course there is like uh, you gotta respect the culture of the clubs. You gotta respect that they have built it, and you visit the club at the same time. Uh, like you see that hey, they are doing this really good. And when you have seen that on the other club, they are doing this really good. You can give like ideas to the, each others that, hey, they are doing this good, they are doing this good. And they are also like visiting on a different clubs or, or to doing like uh, uh, symposiums together that, hey, introduce your club, we introduce our things. So they are sharing <laughs> sharing is caring <laughs> uh, well i was gonna ask like it sounds like there's still a lot of sharing there despite the fact that within those club systems there's competition and yeah you know within the within the 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 main league but there's still a lot of open dialogue and sharing and that's i mean to me that just sounds fantastic yeah yeah it's 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 really really nice and uh, it's been more more and more open like late years and uh, I, I wish it, uh, it gets back that we get like more those like top traps and get those like top guys coming. And uh, I, I believe there is a little change coming that uh, Finland is going to get like a little bit more those top guys. Back, now, back. <laughs> so one of the things that we've always associated as much as like the, it's changed a little bit in terms of the way, you know, the little less white, like it's not as unique from region to region as it's sort of become similar. One of the traits that we've always heard associated with Finnish goaltenders is active hands. 
still a focal point? Is that still something you guys focus on? Um, uh, do you think maybe even any more than anyone else? Or wh- where's tell me where where the, where's that? And is a trait? Is that a bit of a stereotype at this point? Is it accurate still? Uh, it, it's it's a pretty accurate. It's it's been like uh, in a, in a history. It's it's also like we had guys like Mika Kiprosov, and uh, yep. there, there there is those role models for us. Like uh, and uh, it, it's been there has been doing a lot of like handwork on a practice, and I think it's now com- coming also like a little bit more balanced uh, way that there start to be maybe better footwork, maybe a little bit stealing here and there, because I think now goaltending becomes more universal. Now it's the knowledge and information is everywhere and it's pretty fast everywhere. And now it becomes more like universal. You cannot say that where this guy actually comes from. And you start to see those goalie schools, they start to mix and blend. And uh, like Sweden has his own style, Russia has own style, Finland has own style, North America, a little bit own things. But I think those start to be pretty much mixed nowadays. Yeah, as you said, uh, the, the basics, the foundations, the fundamentals, you guys are all on the same page there. Um, yeah, there, there probably are similarities in every country at that level between the basics. Yeah, I, I, I think it, it start to be like, uh, uh, of course, those like, uh, the chains, it, it comes like, uh, slowly, but like oh, the bright minds who, who are really leading the thing, they, are all already planned at the, all those things, and uh, it's it's start to be like really universal that goaltending. I believe in in, in that strongly. <laughs> okay, well, so uh, let me ask you then, because you've been you've been you've spent time and done coaching in uh, in Russia for you know I guess since around 2013, so like eight, eight almost nine years you've spent time over there. How have yeah. you seen that evolve? What was the coaching like when you first got there compared to what it is now? We hear from the outside that a you know a lot of raw talent early and it's just getting more refined at a later age. Is that changing as well? Uh, yeah, it's uh, it, it was a different league when I I went there and. Uh, I I remember there was a lot of those like Russian goalie coaches. They they were even like filming your ice sessions and 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 uh, they they want to get also information in in Russia that there is uh, import coaches and they right. bring information and they want to educate their people also on that information and. Uh, I think import goalie coaches have, have brought their something, but they have also like all their own traditions, and uh, they have strong traditions. And got, uh, there is a federation led by Tretiak, who is old legend, and they have put up like a lot of effort to build that uh, goalie coaching programs. And uh, I, I was also like uh, through my work a little bit part of to give my information to them and they decided what's the best to put, put, put on, on their programs. I, I've seen those programs and, uh, and it's, I, I think they have pretty good, like up-to-date program right now, but uh, it's been developing all the time. They got more and more educated goalie coaches. They got like more and more goalie coaches on the junior levels. There is uh, more and more also those pro goalie coaches working and uh, they have like good, great raw talent goalies there. Uh, there is, I, I bet there is coming more, <laughs> more so, those guys in NHL. <laughs> now, is that when you say there's good raw talent, is that just because when you have much like you talk about Mika Kiprasov, 
inspiring goalies in Finland and you know, Patrick Waugh inspired goalies in Quebec and Henrik Lundqvist inspired goalies in Sweden. Bob wins Sergei Bobrovsky, two Veznas, Andre Vasilevsky. Yeah. And we just talked we just talked about Igor Shisterkin. When you say they have so much raw talent in goal, is that just because the role models mean that more people want to play the position? Or like what or there's just a lot of people yeah. playing? Yeah, for for sure. There is a connection on, on that. Like uh, Bobrovsky was the first. And now everybody is looking up to Vasilevsky. Everybody wants to get those skills, get, play like him. I'm sure that uh, now there's a lot, a lot of like young kids looking Shestyorkin. And uh, there is even like guy what I like, like a lot, like Sorokin in Islanders. And uh, I, I bet he's gonna be also rocking at some point. <laughs> yeah, his I watched his second half of the season. He could have been a Vesna finalist as well. He was so good. When you say raw talent and you say they have things that they do uh, as much as they've expanded and modernized their goalie coaching in recent years, but they have tra- their own traditions. Is there anything about those yeah. traditions that you think? is leading to this skill? Like, are those traditions based on skating and movement from some of the guys I've talked to? Like, even if the technical stuff isn't refined, do they all move really well? Yeah, I, I think uh, they practice on the ice maybe more than many other countries from the young age. And uh, they have, like, pretty good basic, like, uh, sportmanship or how, how do I say, like, they, they have good skills on, like, basic sports. Uh, they have variety of sports when they are young, and uh, that gives, like, uh, you the basics of, of the athleticism, what we see this Vasilevsky and those guys. And uh, I think every, everybody is interested about those athletic goalies and that, that athleticism because it gives you that little edge outside of the of the package if you have that uh, but they put a lot of effort on on goalie skating goalie a lot of effort on repetitions practicing and uh, like any country the, the top coaches are, are leading the, the thing in there. And uh, other guys are, are following. And I think Ian Clark, uh, through Poprovsky and through his visit to Russia, he has also put his uh, fingerprint in, the, in that country also. <laughs> <laughs> Not just okay, so not just there. There is you. You see some of that over there still too. Yeah, I, I would say he he has put it. His he hasn't made noise on that, but <laughs> I I would say that that's my big guess. <laughs> so um, w- when you see that, and when you see the way that's developed over there, when you talk about athleticism and playing other sports, is that just? kids being allowed to go play other sports or is it actually structured? I think it was UC uh, Parkilla that told me like they have like athlete schools sort of like gymnasium type stuff. And they're, yeah, they're doing, they're doing like dance and ballet and their structure and the, the physical literacy. If that word resonates with you, the ability to move and learn how to move in different ways all translates back onto the ice when they become goalies. Yeah. They, they have like a lot of lot of different sports, but they, what they do, and uh, from from the young age, they they believe in that that it gives you like good basic ground to the any kind of sports, and uh, I think it's for for me it's it's great. I I would like to get also Finnish guys doing the same, not just hockey, but like uh, different backgrounds. So. You, you get a great, great like movement back in your in your body, and you can handle your body better in uh, and 
be ready to take in the practicing in a, in a little bit later. Now, what kind of sports would you recommend? Obviously, we got different traditions over here. Like, you know, baseball is the summer sport in North America. I've always, I always remember I loved asking <laughs> Pe- Pecorine about Pesapola. Um, but like what other kind of sports, if it was you, and I know you've done work with the Federation, like what kind of other activities would you recommend a young goalie make sure as he takes part in in the off season rather than just always being a goalie? Uh, there's, there's a lot of like great sports, but I, I would say that where you have to use your body in a many, many different ways, then it gives you like a good impact. You get like uh, pumped in a different kind of things, and uh, it, it gives you that basic background in a, in a sports. Uh, as long as you have to use your body in a different kind of ways, it, it's it's great. We we have had like uh, like with Tuka, we had Taekwondo, for example. Uh, yeah. He's gonna kick your ass. <laughs> but no, no, no. But it, it, it was more more about there is a lot of balance. There you have to do like technical things. You have to also learn different kind of techniques. And we have had like uh, wrestling. We have had, had, had track and sports. Like like a lot of different things we we tried back then and. I think it builds your like your sportsmanship in in a way. Yeah. You you learn how to control your body. Yeah, just yeah. You you learn how to control your body. It gives you better better control. Well, we like I've heard that some for some of the young Russian like dance is part of that. Um, we've seen some goalies in North America use bar, bar ballet, and you know again different like you said different things that help you learn how to control your body. Um, to bring it back to yeah. Finland, I know during COVID in 2020, 21, um, you worked uh, as sort of a director of goaltending in Finland and you spent a lot of time going sort of back over the program. You're updating your goalie coaching program. Can you walk me through as long as you don't, I don't want you to give away too many secrets, but what kind of work, what kind of things were you guys working on? What were you looking to update? And, you know, where is it now? Like, how do you go about building a nation of better goaltenders. Is it about educating coaches? What's the approach? Uh, yeah, we, we updated our program. Uh, actually, what we did, we tried to study like uh, different countries' programs, what we got. Like, uh, uh, we tried to gather like material from uh, different sources. And then we tried to keep our finish like uh, core in things and then like update that data and everything like to the modern modern day and uh, we put it our courses on online so you have like o- online material then you go through those like what's is like basic information from uh, uh, practicing to games we had like packages like which is uh, goalie skills and then there's like goalie game and then you have like advanced package which is uh, more like coaching and leading and like everything like on on that uh the coaches go through those packages and then they go to like e- either regional uh, uh, days to be on the ice and show what they learned and uh, get like uh, those sessions or they go to the Arumaki to have a little bit longer programs, like three, three days, like maybe four times, three days sessions there. And uh, they have different kind of things they might have like psychology they might have uh, uh, game things they might have practicing things uh, on, on the there and we wanted to update that uh, because we didn't have like online and now it's online everything and also like uh, 
easy to update in the future. So, so for now, so for so you're basically helping educate other goalie coaches. So almost like a curriculum or like a yeah. cer- is it a certification program basically? Yeah, yeah, it's it's kind of like certification. First, you have to go like uh, first level, then you go on the second, and then you are able to go on a third level. That's basically how 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 it is built. Now, for some people, for some coaches, this is the step to maybe they want to be a goalie coach. Maybe this is something they want to do with, as a career. But are you also training like the simple levels, the skills, and like are you also trying to train like is there are there minor hockey coaches like youth coaches that are taking this and are able to coach kids like is that is that also part of what's going on what you're trying to build more coaches at all levels so that every goal young goalie has access to some level of expertise Yeah yeah actually that's how why why we build it on that way that uh, you you don't need to wait like some kind of course to get the information if some team starts and uh, there is a dad or team coach who is like starting coach. He can get access to the information right away. He can get the basics. He doesn't need to uh, wait for half a year to get the information and get started. And that's how we wanted to build like uh, those things that you get access right away to the information and you get like help and education right away. Or if you or if, or even if you've already taken it, you can go back and look at it. Or if there's something you're yeah, trying to focus exactly. on, I love it. I love and it. You, so, and and you can put your goal is to go through that, or you can use those same things at the practices. You uh, there, there's like okay, there's your Jonas Korpisalo showing these things that look how his techniques or you you understand the point. Of, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So people can, yeah, that's awesome. I love it. And I love that you've got guys demonstrating it and doing the drills. Uh, Corpy, another guy that you work with, I knew there was a name I was forgetting from your summer work and Corpy was the one. Apologies to him for forgetting, forgetting he was a part of it. Um, walk me through last one. Uh, no goal goalie Academy. Uh, what's your summer look like? You work, like I said, I mentioned all these names, Lankinen, Mikko Koskinen, who's obviously yeah. still playing Corpy. Like, that that is that a new project in terms of no goal and what are you guys up to? Yeah, that's that's our new project. Like uh, basically, I'm we were both me and Valkama out of work, and we wanted to put like a company together. We have been summer times just for fun to been running running those ice sessions for the guys, and it, it's been nice. But now we wanted to put like a company behind that and now we are also getting more guys into it and basically we got like almost all Finnish NHL goalies will practice with us uh, a lot of guys who plays abroad comes comes to us and uh, it's it's gonna be a fun project it, it's built mostly about the, these off seasons but let's see, we try to get also like uh, maybe clinics in, uh, during the season and those things to help the younger kids if we don't find like <laughs> job, jobs. Let's see. <laughs> I personally like looking for those North American mar- markets, but uh, there is a lot of competition. I know uh, maybe <laughs> maybe some some club in a future also like be interested about my services <laughs> so I, I okay so let, like let's go there i wanted i wanted to ask you a little bit that like um like it, it amazes me um that it took so long for uc parkula to get the opportunity in colorado he's done a hell of a job there you know what why do you think it's taken so long that we don't see more guys get that opportunity from europe is it a big adjustment do you think it would be a big adjustment just because of the the tactics and the tendencies are different over here, or do you think it would just be a small adjustment and pretty easy to pick up from that side of things? Goalies are goalies. Yeah, goal, goalies are goalie. It's for for my eye, uh, game wise, it's maybe not so big, but it's it's also that uh, I haven't ever been in NHL. I 
try to get the information from the guys and from the people around it. Uh, I'm really hard to tell how, how it's going to be, but I work hard to get the like, readiness to succeed if I would get the job. But uh, I would say that uh, maybe it's more about the like contacts, like the contact tech, tech net network is there. And that's how it many times goes like uh, in, in hockey. And fortunately, the hockey world is pretty small. You can create the contact network in, in a long run anyway. But uh, you ne never know how it's going to like end on, on your spot. Like if you get interest or if you don't, but only you can do is to prepare to get ready if you get the chance. That, that's how it, how it goes. I think hockey has become more and more universal. And I respect a lot of that uh, NHL. They have like the strong culture. There is, they, they keep the lot, lot of guys in who, who are professional guys and know, knows how to run things. Uh, but also I, I would wish that they also try to look outside the best private people to bring bring in on, on, on that business. Uh, I'm not sure if I, I'm the one. I wish I, I would be the one. <laughs> Uh, well, well, certainly enough of a cer certainly have the track record for it, Marco. Um, <laughs> listen, uh, this has been awesome. I can't believe we've been talking for an hour already. As usual, I've taken up too much <laughs> of sour. your time. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so enjoyable. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today. Let's, uh, let's, let's hope that call comes and then we'll catch up in person in North America in the near future. <laughs> thanks thanks for having me and uh, thanks and thanks for those Awesome stuff. Uh, I have a new best friend, even though Marco and I have not uh, actually met face to face in listening to that conversation. I'm a big fan of Marco Terenius. So w w what do you love about him uh, yourself, uh, Woody? You heard the laugh a few times? Like you yeah. just, there's an enjoyment there and an understanding. It kind of reminds me a little bit of the interview we had with Mache Swo. More than just drills and movement, it's about the complete goaltender and sort of understanding them as a person. And you see that personality come out and, you know, laughing and having a good time. There are a few times he's probably laughing just because he had to look at his screen and see my toothless grin as yeah. I followed along with a smile as he shared all those stories. But um, just his general approach, obviously. And the fact that like when he started, he literally sought out as much goaltending knowledge as he could. You heard him talking a little bit from the crease. That's Ian Clark's old sort of magazine slash manual that you could buy on goaltending. Um, it was it was like a like a periodical, but you put it in a binder and you kept it like a manual. Um, this yeah. is a guy who just has a passion for the position, and I know he keeps ties internationally with a lot of different goalie coaches. Uh, we talked about the guys he works with in the summer, Vili Huso, Yunus Corpusalo, Mika Ka Miko Koskinen, like guys with tons of different styles and different strengths. And he works with them all in the summer, uh, cognizant not to try and change too much with these guys because he knows they're going back to their, you know, to their NHL teams. And, he, and he's working on things that the NHL teams want them to work on and the NHL goalie coaches. You know, I know uh, Dustin Schwartz spent some time over there with Miko Koskinen and Yunus Corpusalo. And so Marco would have been around that. Like, Marco's just a guy that has, you know, ca built connections as he talks about. And just, I think the passion comes through when you talk to him, the passion for the position that fuels his work. Um, it's kind of hard to miss it when you talk to him. It's contagious. It left me with a big smile on my face as he was, as he was having a good time talking about everything. Kudos to Woody here, um, especially at a tough time because he's just lost his title as Darren's best friend. Uh, which is unfortunate, but kudos to Woody for going out and getting these guests from around the world. Uh, it's goaltending is a worldwide community, but sometimes it can be a little bit insular as well. Everybody's working hard, trying to make ends meet. And so they sort of live within their own little world as coaches and don't get a chance to go worldwide and learn new things. So the fact that Woody's bringing these guests into the In Goal Radio podcast is giving all goaltending coaches, all goaltenders a chance to learn from a, a much wider area 
than we're able to in our local community. So love it, Woody. Thank you. Uh, no problem. I, really, all I'm trying to do is get myself invited to Sweden with Mache and Finland with Marco. Uh, we just need to get that in the end goal budget. Kevin goes overseas. You're not going alone, pal. No, I'm going with you. We'll, we'll manage to make this uh, this relationship work. You're bringing me and your old best friend. <laughs> uh, well, Marco is passionate, uh, and we know that Pete Fry is. Uh, one more uh, little rundown of when and how people can get involved in the Mindset Seminar. June 25th in Vancouver or online from anywhere, including with Darren Millard coming in from PEI, Pete Fry, the goalie mindset guy, will be spending a day helping you with your mindset as a goaltender. If you ask goaltenders what the most important part of the game is, I bet you a whole lot of them would say it's the mind. Then ask them how much time they spend working on their mind, and you're probably going to find out, well, I visualize for three minutes before I go on the ice, or I juggle some balls before I go on the ice. I think it's time that we all dedicate some time to becoming better goaltenders between the ears, because that's one of the great separators. Pete will be with us in Vancouver, spending a day helping you become a better goaltender. Come and join us. Come hang out. Come talk goaltending. Would love to have everybody there. Go to the InGoal website now. If you're an InGoal member, you get a $25 discount. Register for Pete's seminar online or in person. Would love to have you with us. That's between the ears. Uh, Woody is between the gums. And Hutch handles everything else on the Ingle Radio podcast. I'm our new whistling expert. <laughs> uh, thanks for listening, everybody. I hope you enjoyed Marco, uh, Cam, and uh, all the conversation uh, that we have. It's uh, from our hearts, uh, the passion, goaltending on Ingle Radio, the podcast. <laughs>